Should I be sitting down for this? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times friends tackled serious issues. Now we're in a tough spot again, Rach. What do you want to do? How do you want to handle it, huh? Do you want to fight for us or do you want to bail? I guess I'm saying I'll try and quit. I kind of like that you worry about me. Oh, I get no misty here. <laughs> you think I was having my legs waxed or something? <laughs> <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking at various episodes of the TV show Friends that slid over into the serious side for a change. Did we miss a poignant moment from Friends? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Male Affection As much as we'd like to say that the world has matured, there still seems to be some hesitation from guys when it comes to showing affection with each other. In popular media, men are often portrayed as having to be macho and show little emotion. Hey, hey. Hey, listen, I'm sorry about what happened. Yeah, me too. I, I know. know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do we need to hug here, or...? <laughs> no, we're all right. Yeah, man. Man. <laughs> but when it comes to the show Friends, the opposite seems to be true, especially where Chandler and Joey are concerned. Welcome home, man. These two best friends were seen hugging it out on countless occasions over the show's 10-year history. It's a nice illustration of how friends could be willing to go against norms and embrace what true friendship can be about. Yeah, we're gonna be fine. Get out. Yeah? Yeah, you, you did some real good thinking in there. <laughs> Man, this is... <laughs> Number 9. Surrogacy I guess it just brings back memories, you know, from when I gave birth to my brother's triplets and I had to give them up. One of the more memorable plot lines on Friends was Phoebe's selfless act of carrying Frank Jr. and Alice's babies. I know it's going to be like a million times harder to give up a baby, but oh my god, it's going to feel like a million times better, right? The idea of having Phoebe become pregnant came out of the real-life pregnancy of Lisa Kudrow. Producers wanted to find a way to incorporate her pregnancy into the show, and the surrogacy plot made the most sense. And I promise that I'll keep you safe and warm until, you know, you're ready to have them take you home. Along with touching on the real-life struggles of couples trying to conceive, it also speaks to unconventional family beginnings. Surrogacy, adoption, and even one-night stands all played roles in kicking off families while this show was on the air. Number 8. Single Motherhood to the surprise of many, season 8 introduced Rachel's pregnancy. Ross. <laughs> Ross. Okay, whenever you're ready. With Ross being the father, there was never any doubt he would be part of Rachel's journey. The doctor's appointments, the, uh, the Lamaze classes, uh, baby-proofing the apartment. However, with no romantic relationship between them and no prospects in sight, we got a glimpse into the life of a single mother. The first inclination of this was when Janice spoke about her own experience raising a child on her own. I hate to be the one to say it, but honey, you two are on your own. From there, the show managed to find a way to convey the difficulties of Rachel's solo journey. Thankfully, she's surrounded by both friends and family who are more than willing to tell her, we'll be there for you. Number 7. Starting Your Life Over Three and a half minutes into the pilot of Friends, we meet Rachel Green. She's a woman who spent her life living off her parents and had decided to marry into money. When her wedding day finally arrives, a gravy boat triggers an epiphany about her life and she walks away from it all. Anyway, I just had to get out of there and I started wondering why am I doing this and who am I doing this for? Having relied on everyone else to sustain her, Rachel's decision to abandon all of that and go out on her own is one that many people can relate to. Well, maybe that's my decision. Well, maybe I don't need your money. It can be incredibly scary to walk away from all of that in favor of doing what feels right for you. You go, Rachel. Welcome to the real world. It sucks. You're gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> Number 6. Transgender Issues The world of 2001 was a considerably different place in terms of how transgender issues were discussed and portrayed on screen. Has someone taken her order yet? Uh, oh yeah, uh, she did. Uh, he did. She? 
Uh, I'm sorry, I'm new. I don't... <laughs> We learned early on that Chandler's dad had left his mom for the pool boy. Look, I, I know that your dad embarrassed you. I know... No, no, no. All kids are embarrassed by the parents. You'd have to come up with a whole new word for what I went through. When we finally meet Chandler's father, played by Kathleen Turner, the character is headlining a drag show in Vegas as Hell in a Handbasket. It was arguably an inclusive move for its time. However, the show did tend to poke fun at Chandler's dad, and admittedly, the portrayal has not aged particularly well. You must have had terribly fascinating parents. Oh, they're a hoot. <laughs> We're glad we've come a long way since then. Number 5. Self-Worth and Body Issues Back in the second season of Friends, we were introduced to Monica's younger self when Joey exclaimed, Some girl ate Monica. <laughs> Although implied earlier in the series, we finally saw what a younger version of Monica looked like. However, it wasn't until the Thanksgiving flashback episode that we saw what Monica was put through. Hi, I'm Ross's little sister. Okay. <laughs> Chandler refers to her as fat, which badly damages her confidence. Friends has been roundly criticized for its fat jokes, for good reason. But this episode did show us how hurtful someone's words could be in relation to body image. I am really sorry. That is so terrible. I'm so, so sorry. Kudos to the writers for showing us this more vulnerable side to Monica. Number 4. Unconventional Families Years ago, the idea of a family consisted of a husband, a wife, and their kids. As time has passed, the so-called nuclear family is no longer the norm. Like many shows from the 90s, Friends also chose to embrace the idea of non-traditional family types. So how's this, uh, how's this gonna work, <clears throat> you know, with us? The fact that the six friends themselves are so close makes them more akin to family than many blood relatives. Beyond that, it also gave us a blended family with Ross's son. <laughs> Ben's good. Yeah? How come you never mentioned Ben before? We, uh, we just cooked it up. <laughs> ben became the child of two mothers and a father, something rarely seen on television at the time. Coming from an era that was less accepting of such things, this was a more modern direction to examine the family unit. You get to go home with the baby, okay? Where does that leave me? You get to be the baby's father! Oh. Everyone knows who you are, and who am I? There's, there's Father's Day, there's Mother's Day, there's no Lesbian Lover Day! Every day is Lesbian Lover Day! <laughs> Number 3. Alcoholism Since friends focused so much time on the coffee house, it was rare to see them drinking something other than a latte. What do you say we make these uh, coffees Irish? Yet, when Monica gets back together with her old boyfriend Fun Bobby, somehow they burn through five bottles of wine. It's here where they discover that Bobby is only fun because of how much he drinks. Did you notice? How he always starts his stories with, um, okay, I was so wasted, or, oh, we were so bombed, or, um, oh, whoa, so I wake up and I'm in this dumpster in Connecticut. <laughs> Once he's dry, Chandler quips that he's now ridiculously dull, Bobby. <laughs> Despite his now tamer demeanor, we were glad to see Bobby taking the right steps on the road to becoming sober. Number two, gay marriage. Today, the idea of same-sex marriage is nowhere near as controversial as it would have been in 1996. My parents called this afternoon to say they weren't coming. Oh my god! I mean, I knew they were having trouble with this whole thing, but... But they're my parents! I mean, they're supposed to give me away and everything. Surprisingly, though, Carol and Susan's wedding episode didn't actually make that much of a blip on the blowback radar. Only two network stations prohibited the episode from being aired one in Texas and the other in Ohio, and NBC received just four complaints via telephone. Oh my God. Now I've seen everything. <laughs> Regardless, it was still groundbreaking territory at the time. Even so early on in the show's run, the producers embraced the idea that love is, well, love. Carol and Susan gave us a great example of this. You know, nothing makes God happier than when two people any two people come together in love. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Messy divorces. Several of the main characters experience how messy divorces can be. Jim, how did you get through this? Well, I relied on a carefully regimented program of denial, 
and, and wetting the bed. <laughs> Gender stereotypes. It's just a doll, Ross. Get over it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cute. Why, why, why does he have it again? So it's got a doll, so what? Unless you're afraid he's gonna grow up to be in show business. Breakups. It's hard to watch on TV and harder in real life. This can't be it. <sighs> then how come it is? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Fertility Issues When Monica and Chandler decided to have a baby, you could have expected the story to turn out as it did. We find out late in the season that due to medical reasons, they may not ever be able to conceive a child. It means that we can keep trying. But there's a good chance this may never happen for us. Although there are many couples who could relate to this already, it was also a case of art imitating life. Courtney Cox, who played Monica, had experienced fertility issues with her then husband David Arquette. We're gonna we're gonna figure this out. I know. Thankfully, Monica and Chandler choose to adopt. I'm really glad I picked you guys. You're gonna make great parents. Meanwhile, Courtney gave birth to her daughter Coco Arquette a year later. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.